Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the last series that I'm going to be doing for these tool setup series. This one is going to be the phone app Doodle G Schultz. Unfortunately, it only works on Android phones because it is requires APK installation. So if you don't have an Android phone, I'm sorry to say this video won't apply to you. But for those of you that do have Android phones, let's go ahead and continue the tutorial with how to get Doodle G Show up and running. Okay, so we have hopped on the phone and I am going to be going um, straight exactly to where you need to. So go ahead and go to Doodle G Show. It's going to be a GitHub page and it's going to be this first one on the Google. Everything's going to be down below in the description, so you can always check the description for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to install two versions of it. Um, the reason for this is some of the features exist on the on the previous version, but don't exist on the most current version. So that's because I believe it's just one dude doing it. So last time he updated was sometime in September. What we're going to install first is going to be Yuna 2.0, and then we're going to go back and install Chisa 1.1. And I'll show you why we why we need to. So you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, and then you're going to click on the ARM64 APK at the top here. Or if that one doesn't work, so say for example you open it and it crashes, um, you might have to go through the different um, APKs down here and see which one works for your phone. For my case, it works with this top one, so we're going to go ahead and save to downloads. And then um, what you can do is you can just scroll down to the downloads area and you'll be able to see uh, where it is once it's done. Okay, and now that it's done downloading, we're going to go ahead and click on it. And then if you if you haven't installed APKs before on your phone, you're going to need to allow it in your security settings. So we're going to go into our settings and then we're going to allow um, DuckDuckGo to install unknown apps. What we're going to do here is uh, you would click the install button. I'm going to click, uh, I'm not going to click update because um, I already have it installed on my phone, but it's a pretty straightforward process through here. You're going to go through and um, continue, 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 and then you should be able to install it that way. Then we're going to go back to the main screen of the GitHub page. Then we're going to go to Chisa 1.1, scroll all the way down, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. So go ahead and try the first one on the top. If that one doesn't work, then you can go ahead and scroll down and do the other ones. I believe if you have the most recent Android, it's going to be the ARM64 APK one, but you can go ahead and try which one works for you. Okay, so now that we've got them installed on our phones, you're going to see two applications. You'll see one Jiro G Show here, and then one Jiro G Show here. Um, I just added them to a folder. The one with the gal here is going to be Yuna, and then this one is going to be Chisa. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to Jiro G Show Yuna first. So let's go ahead and click it. And here we're gonna see a couple of things. So here we have our ebook reader. So this allows you to read ebooks. And then we have a player here. So I'm just gonna go through some of the features and how you can get them going. Most people will probably be doing this for is watching videos. So let's go ahead, go to the player. So if you click this local media up here, you will now be able to scroll through and search for content. What you have to do is you have to, f you have to get the, um, the same videos that you would be using for MPV, you can bring them over into your phone and you can simply do that by downloading, um, by connecting your phone to your computer and then transferring over the files. I'll go over briefly on how to do that right now. Alrighty, so all you're gonna simply do is just connect your phone via a cable to your computer and then you're going to go ahead and unlock your phone and then click allow. So once you've clicked allow, you will be able to now access your phone device files. So let's just double click into the phone. Mine is the Jared's S22 Ultra. You're going to be able to go into your internal storage and then you'll see all a bunch of these things here. So um, what I did was I right clicked and created a new folder and then renamed it Immersion Content. And then inside of that folder, let's double click into it. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to drag and drop uh, whatever files, whatever movies you want to watch. So I have uh, the third episode of ReZero. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop that into there. And then it's going to copy over. 
and then simply we can just exit out of that and then hop back in the phone. So let's go back to the phone, the app, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, but actually before I get ahead of myself, there are a couple of things that we do have to set up so that we can use Judicial effectively. So number one thing is go make sure you download Anki on the Play Store. For Android phones, it's completely free. So go ahead, install Anki on your phone, and then go ahead and sign in and sync your Anki data from your computer. So. Um, that is all going to be pretty straightforward. Hopping into the Anki app, it looks like this once you have it downloaded. And then you can uh, go ahead and uh, sign in with your settings, Anki Droid, and then sync it. So this little cycle button up here is going to be your syncing. And just do that for your first time around. And then you should be able to hop back into Jito Jishul afterwards after having, Anki got, uh, after having set up Anki. Hopping back into Joodle G Schult, now uh, we're going to set up our Anki export profiles. So go ahead and click the three dots up top here. Go to export profiles. Uh, make sure you click standard Joodle G Schult Yuna. Click the three, but, uh, the three dots here, if I can click them. Click edit, and then make sure all of your settings are set to the way that I have it here. So just go ahead and copy what I have set here. You can pause the video for that. Okay, so I'm editing the video right now and there are a couple of things you need to pay attention to. So actually you wanna have the red, you wanna have the wrap image audio with tags. You wanna have that checked. And then one thing you wanna change is you wanna make pitch accent to sentence audio. So that is if you're mining from video, it's going to extract the audio from the video and put that into this field. And then what we're going to do in Anki is we're going to add that field so the audio plays. So if you're following along with my Anki formatting, this is going to benefit um, because this is how I have my styling set up, but that's going to be later on in the video. So let's get back to the main part, then click save. So that's done for the export settings. And then what we're going to need are dictionaries. So if you don't have any dictionaries, your dictionaries you can't look anything up. So um, I have two dictionaries here. What we're going to do is now we're going to go and find some. The same way that we found it on the computer, we're going to go ahead and go into Yomi-chan's homepage. So click navigate to a browser. Let's do Yomi-chan home. And then we're going to go to the page by Fusoft Productions. And then we're going to scroll down till we see table of contents dictionaries, click it. And then we're going to download JM Dick English. I have already downloaded it. So, but you will go ahead and click save to downloads. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our Jiro G show. Once it's done downloading, click the three buttons on the top right again, go to manage dictionaries and then go to import. I'm going to go to downloads and then you can see that I have the dictionary here and then just go ahead and click it and it'll import. Um, I already have them imported, so I'm not going to redo them. And then, yeah, you can add as many dictionaries as you want. If it works with Yomi Chan, it's going to work with Jiro G show. So. Now that that is out of the way, we're going to go back into the player and I'm going to show you how that works. So a couple of quick things. Um, if you scroll down from the top, you will get a transcript of the subtitles. If you go, uh, if your subtitles aren't appearing and you dragged in a subtitles file with the same name of the video, um, the subtitles file has to be the same name as the video. Uh, you can go ahead and click this um, audio sign here. Go ahead and click select subtitle track and you should be able to find the uh, the subtitles. As well, you can change the subtitle appearances. You can play around with a couple of things and there are a bunch of other settings that you can play with here. Um, I would just go and check to see how they work. But the most important one in my opinion is being able to look things up. So uh, if you want to look up a word and then you want to export it, all you have to do is simply click on it. So I'm going to click on it. Tasha. And then I'm going to click the top right plus over here, and then you're going to be brought to this page. So the you, ha you have the term, the reading, the sentence and the meaning. And usually, you know, it's a huge mess over here for the meaning. So what I like to do is um, trim it down by taking a look at the definitions. I'm going to do in good health and then I'm going to play the audio to make sure it sounds good. Tasha. And then I'm just going to make sure the Anki deck I'm exporting it to is the Anki deck that I want to have it in. So uh, I do have it in the subs to SRS, which is the one that I want to. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click create card. So now it's going to create a card. 
Um, I'm not going to create one because I have already done so. And then we're going to hop back into Anki and see if the card is correct. So once you're in the Anki phone app, you can click the three bars up top left, go to card browser, go into your current deck. Currently, I am using the subs to SRS one here, and then I'm going to click the top one this one this is what i had exported earlier and when i was testing some things and you can see i have the card here so i've actually edited how this card looks um in anki so i have a specific way i've formatted this i will put that in the description if you want to import that and then you can take a look at the way that this is formatted i have it appear up, up here if i click and then i have the sentence as a hint and then it's going to run through that way and so I want to re-go over how you can import an Anki deck. So it's pretty easy. Just go ahead, open up Anki, and download the Anki formatting that I had for the Jidol Jishol unit. And then what you're going to do is click Import File. And then you're going to find wherever it's located. And then click the APKG, Open. And then it's going to open it. So now it's going to add the note. And you'll have the note in here. And then you can go ahead and delete the deck. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the Japanese. Um, and then you can go in here now and you can verify that you have the note type for Jiro Jisho Yuna. So that has all of the formatting that I've done for it. So for an example, if I go ahead and create a card, it's going to now give me all of the stuff that I have, um, that I have done. So if you want to check how the coding is for it, you can go into the browser, go to Jiro Jisho Yuna, then go to cards, and then you can see the front template and then the back template and then my styling here. So that's a quick rundown of how you can import deck styles into your Anki. So that's it for the media playing. Um, now what we're going to head over on into is the reader. Um, this tab on the right, we're not going to really focus on into too much. It's got the dictionaries that we can use. But the reader is pretty cool because what we can do is we can upload EPUBs and read them or we can even read online. So in this version of Jiro Jisho, you can't read online, but the other one you can. However, this one, I'll go ahead and show you how you can import a book. So go ahead, click that top bar up there. Um, yours isn't going to load up like this. It's going to load up at this screen here and you'll see an upload picture in the middle. In the case that you have books already, this is how it's going to look. Uh, but what you want to click is this file on the top corner up here and then um, like I showed previously how to how to copy over the video file you can also copy over any EPUB files that you might want to so go ahead if you have one you can import it over if you click it now it's going to um, open up the book and it'll be something along the lines of this so now we have the book and we can go through it um, as well what you can do is you can change the settings so I like to have mine at 10 because if I have it dark I tend to fall asleep the font size I keep at 20 you can make bigger if you want to I do continuous because um, I don't like paginated I keep the writing vertical I turn on auto bookmarks so that uh, when I leave the book it automatically keeps the place it is a little bit glitchy sometimes but it works good for the most part and then I leave all these other things the way they are and then the cool thing is now that once you're reading, you can actually just click words and you can see what their definition is. And then you can do the exact same uh, mining method that I showed you in the player. So that's pretty much it for the reader. Now it allows you to read things like TTU, making reading light novels much, much, much simpler and possible than compared to before. So. Those are the two biggest things inside of Yuna. The next thing that I want to show is um, you can also do YouTube. So if you go up here to the top left, you can click YouTube, but I don't really do YouTube too much. Hop on over into Jiro Jusho Chisha, Chisa and uh, I'll briefly go over how you can get manga in here. So in order to read manga, you need to download something called Tachiyomi and Tachiyomi you can find online by just clicking by typing in Tachiyomi going to Tachiyomi then going to download and then you can download the stable APK version and install it the same way we did Jiro Jisho and then here's how Tachiyomi looks it won't have any books or manga in there once you get here um, the you know you're gonna have to go to browse and you're gonna have to find some extensions these are what I use right now um, but you know you'll have to do some browsing on your own but the most important thing in order to get it to working with Jiro Jisho is go to settings. You want to make sure that inside of downloads, uh, your C save as CBZ archive is off. So you don't want that on. 
and then you want to make sure that your download location is set to where it's supposed to is set at the, the standard location once you do that um, you should be able to refresh it and then you should be able to find it inside of Jiro Jishou. So that's just going to be a quick um, introduction on how you can use Mongo. The most important thing about this version is that uh, is it allows you to read in the browser. So say for example you're here, uh, you can click Google, you can now type in google.com and it's going to open up the browser to where you can look things up. So here I was looking up Denshi Gokaku earlier um, and I you can go onto Wikipedia and you can look things up. This version of Judo Jishou is a little bit different in terms of the pop-up. So you're still going to need to set up everything exactly the same way for the dictionary. So you click the three top right buttons, you go to manage dictionaries, and then you import the, um, the Yomi-chan dictionary or the dictionary that we just downloaded for the other version in, and then you'll be able to look things up. However, what I was saying is that this one is a little bit different. So um, let's go back to that Wikipedia article. For example, um, if we click on words, it doesn't do anything. And that's because the way that this version of Jiro Jisho looks things up is a little bit different. So that's the biggest change from the previous version or from the newest version to this older version. But what it does allow you to do is highlight and then for Samsung, for whatever reason, the Samsung pop-up also appears. But you can highlight a sentence and then <clears throat> and then you can click creator. And this will allow you to create words or allow you to search up a word and then mine it. So the way the way you do that is you click this tab here. Let's say I want to do this one because I don't know this one. Then you're going to search. And then you're going to click set. So adjacency, we want to use that dictionary definition. We're going to delete that. And then we're going to make sure that it exports to the one we're using. And then we can scroll through the images here that we want. And then we'll click here to create a four volt audio for it. And then we'll go ahead and export the card. And so you can also use this for mining. Um, but in the case you don't want to mine with this one because it can be kind of cumbersome, you, you can just search it and then it'll come up with the dictionary definition of the word. So this is how this version works. You can click out of it here. The, yeah, the unfortunate thing is you can't click to look up words, but you can hover over and then click search. So that is how you look up words in this version. And then you can scroll through dictionaries by scrolling down from this red area up or down. So that is the that is the other most other important thing I think about Judo Jishou is it allows you to read through the browser. Um, there is, you know, you can use the Kiwi browser and install Yomi-chan and, and do it that way. That is another workaround, but um, this allows you to mine and mine cards to Anki. I did say earlier, I, I won't go over how you set up the touch Yomi part of things. Um, and I guess there is one more thing that I want to go over on in the viewer. Once you have manga in here, um, say for example, let's go ahead and click chapter one of Kanojo Okarishima. In order to search things up, you have to click the top here and then you actually have to type things. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of, of manual labor to type things up. It does have an OCR, but the OCR works sometimes. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of OCR, um, but. I do, I do prefer to just type things up. So if you just want to search up some words, you can, um, or get better at the keyboard, you can. Connell Joel. And click search. Yeah. And then you can mine from here as well too, but um, I think it's just better for reading. All right, and so that is an overview and showcase of Jiro Jisho, the phone app. It's the one that I, it's the one thing that I use most often. It's pretty simple and it's very powerful. Um, I know I didn't go over every little thing possible for it because um, I personally haven't gone through everything, but if you go through it and play around it, it can be very powerful. I mainly use it for the reader, but that's going to be the end of the tool setup series. The following video is going to be an example of my sentence mining workflow and how I've optimized that and just some tips and tricks um, to use these tools. So that's going to be the end of this one. So hopefully I see you in the last video of the series. And once again, good looking journey out there. We'll see you again later.